Thank you. Morning, folks. Morning. Good to be with you again. Uh, just turn with me to Nehemiah chapter 2 and Romans chapter 8 to start off with. <clears throat> Nehemiah chapter 2 and then a finger in Romans chapter 8. <clears throat> Let's just pray before we go any further. Father, we thank you for the time that we've enjoyed together this morning. Thank you for every remembrance of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we just pray now as we spend a short time in thy word. We ask for the help of thy Holy Spirit. Lord, help us to understand the things that thou hast for us this morning. Help us to believe them. Help us to apply them to our lives and draw us closer to thee, we pray. For we ask it for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Nehemiah chapter 2 uh, and verse 8. <clears throat> uh, says this. And a letter unto Asaph the keeper of the king's forest. That he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the palace. Which appertain to the house. And for the wall of the city. And for the house that I shall enter into. And the king granted me according to the good hand of my God upon me. Verse 18. Then I told them of the hand of my God which was good upon me, as also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And they said, Let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. The title of my uh, thoughts this morning is uh, the good hand of God the good hand uh, of God uh, praying much about what to bring this morning and I felt uh, in the middle of the week the Lord really laid this uh, subject upon my heart partly through uh, my own personal experience and through uh, the reading of the word of God and I just want to bring with the Lord's help a word of encouragement to us all this morning I think we all need encouraging don't we and the word of God contains much encouragement uh, for us all. <clears throat> but I just wonder whether you notice there uh, the order. First of all, in verse 8 of Nehemiah 2, it's the good hand of my God upon me. And then in verse 18, it's the hand of my God which was good upon me. And that to me uh, is interesting. What does it mean? Well, really, I think it's quite simple. It means God's hand is good because God is good. And so everything that he does and everything that he is, is good. So first of all, be encouraged that God's hand is good. But I also think it means God's hand works for good upon us and for us. And I suppose the challenge is this morning, um, as Christians, does that mean that everything that we go through and every situation that we face and everything that we have to deal with, does that mean it's always good? And I think uh, there's sufficient here this morning that would testify that that is not always the case. Much of what we have to deal with in life, much of what we have to endure, much of what we go through, in fact, is far from good. Despite what a lot of modern preachers uh, would tell us. And yet there is a wonderful truth found for us here, that God's hand is good because God is good. And God's hand upon us works ultimately good for us and Nehemiah knew that we're not going to spend time in near Nehemiah this morning but Nehemiah knew that Nehemiah had a work that he was called to do by God and he had the most severe opposition and he had the most severe difficulties and the most severe lies uh, to face and to deal with and yet he realized he was doing a good work for a good God whose hand was good upon him Romans chapter 8. <clears throat> <coughs> 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 
Romans chapter 8. And verse 28. You know it well, I'm sure. The Bible says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. We know. We know. Do we? Do we? You see, the Bible says all things work together for good. The Bible does not say all good things work together. The Bible says all things work together for good. That's the good and that's the bad. That's the high times, that's the low times. That's the joyful times, that's the negative times. That's the easy times, that's the difficult times. The Word of God assures us that God is good and God's hand is good. The Word of God assures us that God's hand upon us is working out good for us. And the Word of God assures us that all these things that we face, all these times that we go through, all these things that we endure, work together for good. Do you know that this morning? Can you testify of that this morning? Whatever the situation it might be, we know that this thing, along with everything else, will work together for our good. That's a great promise of God. It's a great promise of God. And sometimes, you know, we can lose sight of that. And sometimes we can be dragged down because life is difficult. And maybe things aren't working out just the way that we think they might work out. Maybe things aren't working out the way that we want them to work out. Maybe we can't just understand why we're going through what we're going through. Maybe we can't just understand how this thing will end up. Well, we don't need to understand it. That's the truth of the matter. We don't need to work it out. We just need to believe as Christians this morning, and these promises only apply to Christians this morning. If you're here and you're saved, praise God, this truth is for you. If you're here and you're not saved, then you need to get saved so you can claim these promises of God. But the truth of the matter is that God is at work in our lives because he is good and he is working things out for our good and his glory and that's a wonderful truth if we can get hold of it now come with me to Daniel chapter 6 <clears throat> Daniel chapter 6 I'm going to read the whole of the chapter I make no apologies for that <clears throat> there's just some simple truths that with the Lord's help I'd like to bring out this morning. <clears throat> Daniel chapter 6. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find none occasion nor fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king, and said thus unto him, King Darius, live for ever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counsellors and the captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statute, and to make a firm decree, that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days, save of thee, O king, 
he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within thirty days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Then answered they and said before the king, That Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself, and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he laboured till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king, and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is, that no decree nor statute which the king establisheth may be changed. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel, and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake, and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And a stone was brought, and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace, and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice, saying, Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God hath sent his angel and hath shut the lions' mouths, that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then was the king exceeding glad for him, and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no manner of hurt was found upon him, because he believed in his God. And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions, them, their children, and their wives, and the lions had the mastery of them, and break all their bones in pieces, or ever came, or ever they came to the bottom of the den. Then King Darius wrote unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, Peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God, and steadfast forever, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivereth and rescueth, he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth, who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius, and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. I think we see in this account in the life of, of Daniel, uh, the truth of what uh, I've been trying to say uh, really uh, this morning. God's hand is good, and God's good hand is upon us. And all things work together for good to those that love uh, the Lord. I'd just like to uh, remind ourselves of Daniel's character. Uh, how did Daniel end up in a den of lions? Was it because that he deserved to be there? Was it because that he wasn't the man that he should be? Wasn't, was it because he wasn't walking where he should be walking? And uh, so we could say, well, he deserves to be there. But the Bible assures us that is not the case. Just some very quickly, some truths about Daniel's character. If we go back to Daniel chapter 1. I'm not going to dwell on these, 
because the Bible speaks for itself. But in Daniel chapter 1, verse 4, children in whom was no blemish, but well favoured and skilful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning of the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel. And so we find here, first of all, that this man Daniel uh, had... Uh, no blemish. He was well favoured, the Bible tells us. He was wise. He was knowledgeable. He was able. He was teachable. These are, these are all good, strong, positive characteristics of this man, Daniel. Further on in chapter 8, verse 8. Sorry, in, in chapter 1, verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into favour and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. We find here he was a man of strong will. He was a man of character. He was a, a man blessed by God. Would to God that we would see some of these characteristics in men today. Sadly, they are lacking in this modern world in which we live. But that was Daniel. That was the man that we're dealing with. That's the character of the man. Chapter 5 and verse uh, 17. In fact, verse 16. And I have heard of thee that thou canst make interpretations and dissolve doubts. Now if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet and of a chain of gold about thy neck, and shalt be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let thy gifts be to thyself, and give thy rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing unto the king and make known to him the interpretation. He was a man of integrity. Not only was he wise, not only was he well favoured, not only was he knowledgeable, not only was he pure in heart, not only was he blessed by God, but he was a man of integrity. King, I don't want your gifts and I don't want your rewards, but I will answer the question that you've asked. And then we come to chapter 6, where we just want to spend a little bit of time this morning. We find in verse 3, then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. We find in verse 4, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. We find in verse 10, he knelt to pray, he honoured God, and he was a man of prayer. So the reason that, that, that we're, we're covering these things is this. That if anybody, humanly speaking, had reason to believe that life was going to be plain sailing, if anybody, humanly speaking, had reason to believe that life was just going to be simple and easy and good, it was Daniel. He wasn't dishonest, he wasn't a liar, he wasn't a thief, he wasn't a, che a, a cheat, he wasn't proud. He honoured God. And he lived for God and he conducted himself in a way that was right and pure and true. And he had every reason, I believe, humanly speaking, to expect an easy ride. You know, when difficulties come in the life of people uh, today, it's, it's so often asked, why me? <laughs> Why me? Why them? Why, why should they suffer? Why should, why should I suffer? And we've got it all wrong. Because we're looking at ourselves and we're looking at our own situations and we're taking our eyes off what God is doing in the all things. My nan always used to say to me, I, I would go often, and uh, she's with the Lord now, as you know, but I would go often, go often and sit down and just say, oh, 
no, nah, this has happened, or no, nah, that's happened, and, uh, and she'd just look at me, and she always had an answer, always had an answer, and she would look at me and say, John, it's just one of God's all things, <laughs> it's just one of God's all things, and it will work together for good, and I often, I often think about that, such, such a simple phrase spoke so often into my situation. And you know what? That situation that you might face, that difficulty that you might face, that worry that you might face, you know what it is? It's just one of God's all things. It's one of God's all things. And it will work together for good. You see, just like Nehemiah, Daniel knew that the good hand of God was upon him. And the hand was, of God was good upon him. And yet he faced a very, very difficult situation. God's good hand did not mean life was going to be easy. Just look at some of what he endured. Verse 4, Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. You see, first of all, the Bible tells us Daniel uh, was over the, uh, uh, verse 2, over these three presidents of whom Daniel was first. Daniel was a president, and here we find the other presidents and the other princes, they're conspiring against him. They're working behind his back. They want to seek his ill. That's why. And you know, there may be people in your life, there may be people in my, li in my life, maybe peers, maybe work colleagues, maybe family members, maybe neighbours, I don't know who it might be. And behind your back, they are seeking your ill. They are seeking to badmouth you. They are seeking to ruin your character. They are seeking to ruin your reputation. It goes on all the time in this evil world in which we live and Daniel faced that remember what we thought about with his character there was no need there was no reason but these presidents these princes they were jealous because Daniel was well favoured and they conspired against a man that did not deserve to be conspired against and they sought ill for a man that did not deserve ill coming his way. The Bible says in verse 5, We shall not find any occasion against his standard except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. They were going to use the word of God and they were going to use the law of God to try and trap him and to try and get him into trouble and to try and get him into difficulties. And the way that they did that was they took the king, we read it together, and they manipulated the king. They knew Daniel was a man of God. They knew Daniel was a man of integrity. They knew Daniel three times every day came before God in prayer. And so as part of their conspiracy and as, as, as part of their wickedness and as part of their evil, evil thoughts, they realised we can bring Daniel down we can get what we want over Daniel by using his God, using the law of his God. And so they went to the king. You know, we read it together. We won't go over it again. And the, 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 the decree was made. We will make illegal what Daniel is doing because we know whether it's illegal or not, Daniel will do it because he honours God. This is the wickedness of men. This is the deceit of men. You know, men haven't changed. Men have not changed. And just what they did with Daniel, they will do with you and I. No doubt about it. And Daniel went, the Bible says, now when Daniel, verse 10, the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber towards... Do you know, it struck me when I just read that. And I'll be honest with you, I think about my own life, I think about my own weaknesses, I think about my own frailty. And if I'd have been Daniel at this situation, 
and I'd have known that this decree of, had been passed, I'd have shut the window. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. I'd have shut the window. But Daniel didn't. Daniel didn't. Daniel said, I don't care what's going on. I don't care about the conspirators. I don't care about the lies. I don't compare, c care about the deceit. I am going to do what I have done every day of my life. I am going to my chamber. The window will be open and I am going to get on my knees and I am going to pray to my God. Well, to God, we had a bit of that character. I had a bit of that character and a bit of that in my own life. And verse 11, these... <laughs> They must have been spying on him, you know. They have to have been, because verse 11, then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making a supplication before his God. Come on, there he, there he is. He's going off to his chamber, look. And that window will be open and he'll be on his knees and he'll be praying. And I can just see these conspirators now looking through that window, trying to find him. There you go, we've got him. We've got him. The king's passed the decree. We've got it in writing. It's been signed. Daniel has broken it at long last. We've got him. What was the result of that? The result was Daniel, verse 16, was cast into a den of lions. Verse 16, then the king commanded and they in fact we'll read verse 15 then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king know O king that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king established may be changed there you go they've seen Daniel they've seen him praying they've realized they've got him they've then gone running to the king they're telling tales to the king I can just imagine them rubbing their hands with glee saying what a great job we've done we're going to bring this man down then the king commanded and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions they brought Daniel the Bible says I wonder if that was the men that assembled against him just imagine that situation they've come they've taken Daniel there's a den of lions and these people that want his ill and these people that are jealous about him and these people that want him overcome and want him destroyed and want his name and reputation destroyed there they are and Daniel's cast into the den of lions we've got him we've got him and I wonder what Daniel was thinking at this point in time I wonder what was going through his mind you know, because these weren't toughless lions. These weren't tame pets. We read on what, what, what these lions did. And we'll think about it in, in a moment. These were real lions. Vicious, killing lions. And I just wonder at that point that Daniel was seized. And at, the, at that point that Daniel was brought to the den of lions and at that point that the king was there I just wonder what, what went through his mind was it why me Lord what's going on Lord I've honoured you Lord I didn't even have the king's food I didn't even have any reward off the king at all I haven't sought anything from this godless kingdom here I've tried to live for you I've tried to do what's right for you I've tried to do and be a man of integrity and purity I've even prayed Lord when they said that I couldn't pray I've honoured you when they said that I couldn't honour you and now Lord I'm about to be cast into that den of lies I wonder if that's what Daniel said or I wonder if Daniel knew my God is good and his good hand is upon me. And if I go into that den of lions, just like the three Hebrew children said when they went into the fiery furnace, if God is able, he'll bring us out the other side. And if he isn't, then praise God. And if God is able, he will bring me through this situation. And if he isn't, praise God. I wonder what you would say. I wonder what I would say. What's your den of lions? What's your situation that you didn't wish you had to face? 
What's your problem that you didn't wish you had to go through? And how do you face it? How do I face it? How do I deal with it? You know, Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10 says, If thou faintest in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. And you know, it's so easy. It's so easy to profess to be a Christian. It's so easy to say we believe in God. It's so easy to say that we've got a strong faith. And then suddenly something happens, the day of adversity comes, and we collapse like a deck of cards because our strength is small. Saying it and preaching it is the easy part. But living it is something very, very, very different. You know, I was, I was, I was amazed. I, 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 I sat there this morning and I just smiled at how the Lord works. What's one of the first things that we do when we face our den of lions? What's one of the first things that, that goes when a difficulty comes into our life? What's one of the first things that we struggle with when there's a situation that is worrying and concerning us? In my existence, it's sleep. Time after time after time, I find myself awake at night. I find myself not sleeping, I find myself... Have you ever noticed in the darkness of the night, all your fears come and all your worries come and all your concerns come and they seem to be a hundred times worse than they are when you wake up in the morning? Did you notice the words that we read together from Psalm 3 and from Psalm 4 this morning? I laid me down and slept. I awaked for the Lord sustained me. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. We can only get to that point when we know that the, the, the hand of the Lord is good and the good hand of the Lord is upon us. When we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. And we take what we need to do, brothers and sisters, is we need to take those all things and just leave them with the Lord. Daniel was not spared the lion's den. He had to go into it. He was taken. He was taken by a king that he'd respected. He was taken by peers. He was taking, taken by those that sought his ill. And he was cast into that den of lions. And then not only was he cast in there, but the Bible says a stone was brought and the den was sealed there was nowhere from humanly speaking there was nowhere for him to go and humanly speaking there was no way out of that situation for him and yet while he was in there God was at work before he went in there God was at work when he came out, God was at work. Daniel didn't know what God was going to do. Daniel didn't know how God was going to work it all out. Daniel would have had every right to say, Lord, why me? But we don't get a sense of that at all from this account in the Word of God. We get a sense of a man who believed God and a man who trusted God. Why? Because he knew the good hand of God was upon him. And he knew the hand of God was good upon him. And what we find, verse 19, Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice, and Daniel, and the, sorry, voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live for Ever. My God hath sent his angel and hath shut the lions' mouths, that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocence he was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done 
no hurt. You know, Daniel was innocent before God. Daniel was of a pure heart. Daniel was of a man of integrity. It did not stop him going into the lion's den, but it did stop the lions devouring him. That's the wonderful thing. The circumstances did not destroy him. Those lions should have ripped him limb from limb before he even hit the floor, just like it did with his accusers afterwards. But God kept him and God brought him through because Daniel was innocent before God. So God blessed him. You know, if we're living as we should be living for the Lord, if we're honouring the Lord as we should be honouring the Lord, it will not keep us from the circumstances. But God will bring us through. And that's the wonderful truth of the matter. And the enemy, those very men that conspired against him, those very men that sought his ill, those very men that sought to ruin him, were devoured by the lions. Not only them, but their children and their wives and all that to do with them. And the lions destroyed the Lord. I was just thinking of that um, proverb, Proverbs chapter 20. I'll read it. No, it's turn there. I'll, I'll read it to you. But Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 27 says, Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein. And he that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. You know, those conspirators, those liars, those deceivers, they dug a pit for Daniel. They dug a pit for him. And you know what happened to it? They fell in it themselves. And I just love the way the proverb says, He that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. What did they seal the den with? They sealed it with a stone. And it was that very stone that kept them in there, although they were even, they were even gone before they hit the floor. Why? Because God was at work they thought they were working out their ends they thought they were getting one over Daniel they thought they were going to get what they wanted to get and yet God's hand was upon Daniel and they couldn't do anything they couldn't do anything that was going to hurt this man of God outside the will of God and what was the result verse 26 I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and steadfast forever. And his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivereth and rescueth. He worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. The first thing that came out of Daniel going through this was God was glorified that's the first thing that comes out the king who signed the decree that men will not worship anybody else the king who signed the decree that, that, that was to say I'm the most important person and everybody will worship me and if they don't then they will die that same king said in every dominion of my kingdom men will tremble and fear before the God of Daniel for he is the living God. What a wonderful thing. If you and I can go through our lion's den, if you and I can go through our difficulties, if you and I can go through our problems and our hurts and deal with those that would seek our ill, and the upshot of it is God is glorified. That's what it's all about. Not you're glorified, not I'm glorified, not anybody else is glorified, but God is glorified. And then the next thing that came out of it in verse 28. So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. He went from the bottom of the lion's den to prosperity in the kingdom. You see, God was at work. God was at work. Daniel would never have chosen to go into that lion's den. Daniel would never have chosen to be lied about. Daniel would never have chosen to be conspired about. 
But God knew what he was doing. And God brought it out to a successful conclusion because God had the glory and Daniel was prospered. I was thinking the life of Joseph. Joseph was taken. Joseph was, was sold into slavery by his brethren. He was betrayed by his own. He went through a difficult time, ended up in prison because of lies. And you know, at the end of the book of Genesis, Joseph says this, But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. You know, this morning, we have a God. And the good hand of that God is upon us. And the hand of God is good upon us. And all things work together for good to you and I if we love God. Does that mean life will be easy? No. Does that mean we'll be spared from the circumstances? No. But does it mean God will work to give him the glory and to bless and to prosper us? Yes, it does. What a wonderful truth. What a wonderful blessing. I've encouraged myself in this this week. And I hope you're encouraged too. What a great and wonderful God we serve. Amen. Amen.